Hi, my name is Reverend Dale Brown, and it is my privilege to welcome you this week to worship. If you are watching this uh, presentation, we give thanks for your time with us, and we thank you for uh, your willingness to be in worship and to, to attempt to grow and know God better through the parables of Jesus. This week we talk about the parable of the wheat, the good fruit, and the weeds or tares as some uh, translations use that call them, uh, that are a dangerous or a bad uh, crop. And we'll talk more about that in just a few moments. Welcome to, to worship this morning. We are thrilled for your presence with us today. Let us pray together. Lord, today we give thanks for your provision. We ask for your help. We ask again for your mercy. And we ask again also for your healing. All this we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Join me as we share together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray today as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. What I'd like to do today with the, the sermon is to read half of the scripture first and to make a few comments and then to read the second half of the scripture and to bring the sermon to a conclusion. So hear these words from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 through 30. He, being Jesus, put before them another parable the kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was sleeping, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. This is the story, the parable that Jesus tells. And again, it's one of those parables that has to do with the reality and understanding of agriculture in the ancient world. A good farmer, a hard-working, dedicated farmer, one who wants to see a, a, a good produce, a good harvest, sows seed in a field. It happens to be, as Jesus describes in this parable, wheat seed and he goes to bed and during the night according to the parable that Jesus tells someone sneaks in and plants 
weeds or tares as the old word used to be in the same field and next to the wheat so that wheat grows but also weeds grow and sometimes if you're like me and don't really know plants and flowers other than that's a pretty one over there um, it's hard to tell the difference and so the the servants the slaves the people working for the farmer ask should we go into the field and pull out the weeds and the farmer wisely says no in pulling out the weeds when they're young and small you'll pull out the wheat as well and the enemy of this person will have met with ultimate success so the farmer says wait until the harvest wait until it's the end of the season and then we'll gather the weeds to be burned and the wheat to gain a profit from this is the parable that Jesus tells and in just a few verses later he explains this parable so these are verses 36 through 43 it reads this way then he left the crowds and went into the house and his disciples approached him saying explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field he answered the one who sows good seed is the son of man the field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom the weeds are the children of the evil one and the enemy who sowed them is the devil the harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun, in the kingdom of their father that anyone who has ears listen dear friends this is the word of god for the people of god thanks be to god let us pray the lord's may the lord may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you my rock and my redeemer amen so there are two sermons that i've wanted to preach this week on this parable and it's not one that we talk about a whole lot but it is an important parable of Jesus the first sermon has to do with asking a question as you look at your life and your relationship with God and your faith and who you are today are you wheat or are you weeds If we ask that question sincerely, maybe what we truly are is a combination of the two. We're wheat if we're faithful to Christ, taking part in the means of grace like scripture reading and worship and prayer and all of those things, Holy Communion, serving others that bring us close to God and help us to grow in our faith. That's what we faithful people do. Wheat are those, Jesus says, that are faithful to God across the span of their lifetime so that when the end of life or the end of the age comes, they are destined for a home with Jesus in eternity. So are you wheat? Or are you weeds? The weeds are those who kind of mess things up. They they grow and they get in the way and they don't do the work of Jesus. In fact, maybe they're opposed to that work. And maybe they're just simply indifferent. When it's convenient, when it suits, they'll follow Jesus. But not if it's challenging or difficult or requires effort. And so while that goes on, these weeds go in the opposite direction or ignore or do their own thing and in the end they face judgment. In a way this parable is similar in my mind to the parable of the sheep and the goats in Matthew chapter 25 when Jesus is seen as the righteous judge for all humanity and he has those who appear 
on his left hand are the goats, and those who appear on his right are the sheep. And the sheep are those who did small things with great love, as Mother Teresa used to say, uh, for everyone, for those particularly vulnerable and in need, a cup of water, clothing, persons who needed clothing, visiting the lonely, visiting those in prison, and the goats were those who did none of these things, but they say, sure, if we had known that Jesus was there, we would have done it. More often than not, it's doing our own thing or being indifferent that causes us to become a weed. So today, one sermon I would have preached, or I have thought about preaching is, are you weed or are you weeds? And I say that with all seriousness because many of us, most of us, are a combination of the two. We have our moments when we're inspired and we're faithful and we're following Jesus and it's the most important thing to us and we have those moments that maybe we're kind of veering off the course. But what I think the Christian faith requires is our best efforts, our concentrated efforts at consistency. We're never going to be perfect in the sense that we're going to read scripture every day or we're going to uh, you know, pray fervently every day or these things. But are we regularly enough doing them enough that, that we're growing to Christ? Are we more faithful and closer to God today than we were two months ago? Are we better in some ways than we were yesterday? And the weeds are those who just kind of do our own thing. We're footloose and fancy free to quote a saying from the past. We don't really pay attention. We're not focused. The only thing we're interested in is our own stuff. And Jesus calls us out of that lifestyle into a lifestyle of becoming wheat, where we grow regularly and faithfully, planned, concentrated discipleship for Jesus Christ. The other sermon is one that talks about what Jesus mentions here in the last several verses. And, and it's a topic, you know, and Austin's here with me as he films. Austin, it's a topic that a lot of people don't like to, to think about and talk about, and that's the end of the age and judgment. We like it when Jesus is warm and fuzzy. We don't like it when Jesus says that there are results or consequences from our actions or our inactions. But keep in mind that any kind of understanding of the world or faith has to deal with the reality of evil. We have to do something with sin, and sin is missing the mark. It's not becoming like Christ. It's doing harm. Sin is always destructive and death dealing. A holy God cannot live and not, cannot coexist with sin. A holy God calls us to more in every facet of our lives. And we have to do something with those evil impulses, those evil words, thoughts, and actions that we've seen across history. It would be unthinkable if God did not in some way judge even the greatest evils our world has ever known, like the, the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, numerous, numerous times where people have tried to wipe out whole races of people. The actions of Nazi Germany against Jews and many, many different groups, six million killed. I believe the heart of God still cries out with that reality and the continued sin of anti-Semitism today. Pol Pot, Idi Amin, over and over again, humanity wars within itself and against, it, against others who are different. And, you know, we've got to, we've, we as people have to respond to that evil and God certainly will. I believe that when those horrible things are happening, God feels our pain and weeps. And God will deal with evil and destroy it at the right time, at the end of human history. That's the trajectory we're on. The sin of our world and the sin of our lives will not always be present. It won't always be what seemingly takes over and is in charge. 
God will judge. A holy God has to. And a holy God has to somehow welcome home and accept maybe even a word of reward for the good that people do. The good actions that people participate in, in the sense that God calls us to do them, and when we do them and are found faithful, God invites us even closer in relationship. Yes, it's hard to talk about punishment and judgment. We want God to welcome everyone. I believe that God loves all people, even those who are sinning, and somehow I want the whole world to be redeemed. And I think God does too. But the truth is this. There are weeds and there is wheat. And God's judgment will come on those who do evil. On those who hurt and hinder and harm God's children. I had a pastor growing up uh, who was from Pennsylvania Dutch country. The Reverend Tom Wall. His daughter Christine and I graduated together and his son Tom was maybe a couple years older than us. And, and I always got tickled, this verse 42, because it read, he always read it in this way. There will, he will throw them into the furnace of fire and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I think that was his Pennsylvania Dutch coming out. But it's true. There is judgment, there is love, and it is the love that compels us and draws us into relationship with God. Please keep in mind, God loves you immensely. God wants a relationship with you. God does not like nor desire to punish you. But God has to stand for what is right, because God is right. God is love. And love always gives us a way to come home. And we are invited to do so. So this parable asks, where does evil come from and who are the evil doers and reminds us that in the end, the good triumphs, God triumphs. And so do those who faithfully follow him. So here's the, the admonition for this week. Make sure you're weak. Be good stuff rather than weeds. After all, nobody likes weeds. Amen. Oh, Jesus.
Please join me in a closing prayer. Wonderful Christ, we give thanks for this parable, for the words and the teaching, for how it instructs our living. And we ask that as we faithfully serve Christ, that you will remind us that we are blessed as we come closer to and love others in the name of Christ. And the farther away we go, we are judged. Help us avoid judgment by practicing and living in the reality of God's immense love. 
All this we pray in the name of our Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is with us now and always. Amen.